What's going on, guys? It is Garage News Time. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'm Anthony, Red Star Garage. Let's dive into the video. All right, so you probably guessed it from the uh, little intro that I did there. We're going to be talking about Polaris and what they've got in their lineup. Now, I'm not going to dive into deep details. We're going to just run through real quick what they have to offer, and then we'll be going back and I'll do a breakdown video. I just wanted to see what the boys at Polaris are up to as, you know, I'm a Polaris fan. I have the uh, Polaris Razor uh, XP4 1000 with Ride Command and all of that stuff. I've also owned Sportsman's and other Polaris's through the years, but let's see what the guys over at Polaris are up to. All right, so we just we're going to jump right into the Polaris off-road website. Now these guys have a lot of different options. If you're not familiar with Polaris and you're looking for whether it's the Razor, a four-wheeler, or the General, or it could be the uh, Ranger, they have pretty much everything that you would want if you're looking for a recreational vehicle to go off-roading with. With that being said, let's see. As you can as hopefully you can see if I'm sharing sharing my screen at this point. That's kind of the the quick look at what they've got going on. Um, let's start with the Razor lineup for 2021. Let's just do Explore lineup. There we go. Perfect. So they have a pretty decent site. Now, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. If you are interested in any of these vehicles today, there are several ways you can search you can go new like what we're doing now but do your homework even if you're going to do a used one maybe you're looking on facebook marketplace looking on craigslist or at your local dealer and they have a used one make sure get online check the razor or check the polaris website or if you're looking at a canam or whatever check the website see what they retail for see what options you could get because there's so many different variations of these vehicles which is the reason we're not going to be diving into the specifics today. Um, but you want to understand that before you commit and you buy, because maybe you're buying at a uh, much higher than what it probably should be, or maybe you're getting a hell of a deal on a package that you're unaware of. Like I said, that is a uh, 20, what is it? 2019 um, Razor for XP 1000 with ride command and the ride command was a several thousand dollar option uh on top of the standard vehicle in addition to that if you were to piecemeal that together because you wanted it you would end up spending way more than buying the option directly from your dealer so stuff to keep in mind when you look at it plus there are so many freaking accessories available um that it may also be a determining factor if you're looking for new or used to see what it comes with because these vehicles don't come stock with uh the doors the well some may some options may um come with the doors but what about the roof what about the windshield what about the winch what about this 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 is we'll go into that in a different vi uh different video because i do want to break that down i want to help you guys find the vehicle that you're looking for so out of the gate just like any other lineup, you want to understand, in my opinion, what it is you're trying to get. Are you looking for a two-seater, a four-seater? Are you going to bring passengers? Is it just you? Um, and again, we're starting off with the 2021 Razor lineup. So they have the 570 Trail uh, starting at $10,599. Then you go up to the Razor Trail, $13,399. Jumping over to the Trail S, $15,299. Um, obviously, again, as you progress for price, you also get more options. You also get more features. You get a lot of things as you kind of build up and your price grows. So does all of the equipment. So keep that in mind. Um, I know that looking at some of this stuff, you know, we're looking at a $20,000 razor, but what does that feature and what are you going to do? I mean, those are some of the questions I would ask myself. Uh, if I were in the market at this moment for one of these vehicles. Then we go over to the Razor RS1, which is the one-seater uh, starting at about $15,000. There went a plane. <laughs> um, then you got the Razor XP1000 at about eighteen five. the Turbos at twenty, and then the, RZ, uh, the Razor Pro XP at twenty 
3000 Now, I've seen several videos on the turbos. I looked at a turbo when I bought mine. Um, the new Turbo XB is supposed to be an amazing vehicle. But just like everything else, there's stuff that you have to consider. Do you need the XP Pro stuff or is the XP 1000 going to accommodate and, and fulfill all your needs? Again, questions you need to consider. What are you doing with the vehicle? Do you want the badass Mac Daddy or does the, you know, more basic uh, fulfill your needs? And maybe that money that you save in between, you can deck your uh, XP 1000 out. That was ultimately what my determining factor was when it came between this and the turbo. Plus, the turbo was new to this year and I was a bit hesitant to dive into it. Um, and then you go into the, like the Turbo S, uh, and you've got the Turbo S4. You got a couple of special editions, which are cool, um, which is the XP1000 Trails and Rocks, XP1000 High Lifters. These are cool. I've seen these in person, crawled in and out of them. They were available when I was buying mine, or variations of them were. Um, then you've got your four seaters where you're jumping into. Like what we have, the XP4 1000, you got the XP4 uh, 1000 Turbo, which actually that's a pretty awesome price difference. Wow. Um, and then you jump into the Pro XP4, which so if you're looking at this, jumping from this all the way to the Pro, I mean, you're, you're committed three grand, three to four grand. And then you go up to the S4, very nice a lot of features, a lot of really cool things. Again, I'll dive back into and do some breakdown videos, hopefully comparing some of these models side by side to see in depth what some of these features are. But what a nice lineup that they have. They also have the uh, RZR 170 um, available as well. Now, you do have options when you do purchase the vehicle, depending on your lender or if you're paying cash, of course. Um, more than likely, if you are working with a Polaris dealer that pretty much specializes or has an abundance of the razors, which ours, my local uh, dealerships do, if you're buying a new one, man, you can broker in or, or try to broker a deal on parts as well. Because like when I bought mine, I bought my razor and then I bought thousands of dollars worth of parts right on it because I knew... It's like, if I'm going to commit and do this, I need a roof, I need a windshield, I need a bumper, I need blah, 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 but I got a really good deal. The guys there uh, at my local dealer did an incredible job with working with me on it because I was buying a brand new machine. So I would recommend if you're in the market for, whether it's a Razor, a Ranger, or what have you, it doesn't matter. Um, try to get the best deal you can because, again, it's a big commitment and uh, you want to make sure and outfit your vehicle appropriately because if you run one straight out of straight from the the factory, yeah, it does great. It has a lot of cool features, but you know, depending on your riding conditions, your terrain, and everything else, you may want bigger tires or need bigger tires. You may need a windshield if you have passengers. You may need a roof if you're in a rainy climate, uh, so forth and so on. So let's jump back. That was the Razor lineup for 2021. Let's look real quick at the Ranger lineup. I have been highly interested in Ranger, and maybe it's just a utilitarian part of it. I like it. I like the way they look now. Um, I like the features that they offer. Uh, maybe it's a future vehicle in addition to the Ranger I'll get. Um, I just like it. I like just what it is. So they have several options. We're going to – let's just go to crew. So – let me see if I can do, oh, there we go. Let me hit explore lineup again so we can kind of cruise through it. So you got the Ranger 500. Again, that's a real basic vehicle. Now, one thing you have to note, and I've got a lot of friends with, with uh, Rangers and Razors, and I asked him before I bought mine years ago, you know, really what's the difference between these vehicles? And I know that there's been some changes since, since I had several conversations, but really – Keep into consideration that the Razor is a performance vehicle meant for essentially hauling ass off-road, taking bumps, and doing crazy stuff like that. To whereas the Ranger is more or less built for utilitarian purposes. If you have a farm, if you maybe you're a hunter and you want to take this thing out, you want to tow some stuff, 
or or bring back uh, some wood or rocks or a moose or or what have you. Um, so they are built different, and you need to take that into consideration because you may like one over the other, but depending on your driving, your passengers, and what you want to do, I would highly consider doing your research before committing to either or. So again, back to it, Ranger 500s at 9500 bucks. The Ranger 570 starts at 10 thousand two hundred the ranger ev uh comes in at around 12 then you go into a three seater you know 10 5 ranger 1013 the xp 1000 is 17 again those are two seaters see this is the stuff that i really like i like i think this is <laughs> there may be a future for one of these or one of these may be in my future i should say uh you got the ranger xp 1000 north star edition see i i just really like that i like how this looks too um looks like just a little badass workhorse um and again you can do a shitload of things to these vehicles don't get me wrong there is a ton of accessories a ton of options if you want to lift them if you want to put bigger wheels and tire sound systems like you can see here windshields doors plows and the same for the razor um very very cool uh so you you jump to this xp 1000 North star edition you're up to about twenty seven thousand dollars you jump back over to like the trail boss um you know which is again a different vehicle it's suited for different a different line of what you're going to be doing um and and there's your pricing for those let's jump up to the cruise so kind of your baseline cruise 570s 11.5 570 full size is you know 12.2 the crew 1000 14.4 then you jump up to the crew xp 1000 right at 19 i will be interested uh to maybe i'll come back and, and drop a comment tell me what you guys think maybe i'll come back and do uh, some breakdowns of the Ranger itself, of the Razor itself, of uh, just everything. Because I, I feel like they have enough options there and enough differences to where uh, breaking one down or breaking two down may help you. It'll help me understand more of what they have in their lineup. Let's go to, so we talked about the Razor, talked about the Ranger. Now, the, gen, the General, um, I'm not, again, super familiar with. If I understand it correctly, the general is kind of the guy in between the Razor and the Ranger. Let's uh, check this out. Let's see what their lineup is. So the two-seater, they have the General 1000, the General XP 1000. So you're going from 16,000, 23,000. Very limited um, options on this as far as uh, models go. So you got the General 4 1000, and then you got the General XP 4 1000 Deluxe. Both. Uh, I think these are great looking machines as well. That's that's what they have. So the general is kind of a weak one to jump into. But again, you know, I need to do and will do a breakdown. Maybe I'll do one for each of those um, just to kind of see what the differences are. The sportsmen's I've owned uh, sportsmen's. I've almost bought several through the years. Um, I loved mine. I had oops. I've had. Uh, Nothing but good experience with them. You can start with their like baselines. That's what you're seeing here. So if you're in the four wheeler market, which is another thing that I've looked at because I do, um, as I start getting out a heck of a lot more with the Razor in the coming year, I want uh, to run a lead vehicle or a follow vehicle uh, simply because you never know what could happen to this. And uh, the preference would be to have two vehicles as opposed to one when I go out. So. Um, you got your your starting vehicle, which is the 450. There used to be a Sportsman 500, and then there was a 500 HO. Uh, that was kind of your standard, and then they, I believe they had a 400. Um, so the 450 HO is just your your you know basic four wheeler, starting at about 63, and then you jump up to the 570, you know 7,000, the 850. 9,000 and then the XP 1000, which like you get into this and I'm like, I, I, I think that's awesome that they do that. That's, that's a pretty big commitment for a four wheeler and XP 1000. But I would imagine that that thing is one powerful dude. Uh, then you go over to the touring, which clearly is another section, uh, model subsection, um, where you get the uh, 570 touring, which 
So that one's seven grand. So, you know, it's about an $800 option, right, between those two. Um, the 850 Touring, the Sportsman Touring XP 1000. Looks, I'm trying to see. So it looks like, so there's XP 1000 there. There's this one. So it looks like you get some cladding there, some mirrors, the backrest of sort, uh, slightly different wheels. Um, and again, I'll just dive through these as they are. Sport, you got the XP 1000S, which looks like a beast. That thing looks wide. I like how it looks. Actually, that looks really cool. I like this. Um, you got the Scrambler, which probably is a two-wheel drive. I'm not sure. Um, and then the XP 1000S, that's one badass-looking four-wheeler. You got some special editions here. The Sportsman 850 High Lifter, that's a really good-looking machine. Looks like it's got its ventilation out of the hood there, coming in at about 10.2. You go into the XT570, you got the 6x6 570. 6x6 six six are pretty big as far as uh, I know a lot of people that have had them and several people that were looking for them and have and have not kind of found them. You can also, again, um, what I would recommend if you're looking for a used four-wheeler, get on the site and kind of understand what does a 570 come with? What doesn't it? That way, when you're negotiating or talking with someone on Facebook, Craigslist, wherever, you're not guessing and you're not you're not wondering, does it have four-wheel drive? Does it have two-wheel drive? Does it have, um, uh, what kind of braking system does it have? Does it have uh, power steering? What kind of power steering does it have? Those kinds of things can be easily answered by a little bit of research. Whether it's at Polaris.com, I recommend starting there to see if there's any material available. But if not, just Google it and start reading uh, what others have wrote. Uh, there's a full lineup of kids as well. Very nice lineup, though. I feel like, let me jump back to the Polaris website here. Kind of an exciting lineup. Let's look right here. Um, as far as the off-road vehicles go from Pol Polaris, I'm pleasantly surprised to see such a nice Razor lineup, Ranger, General, and Sportsman. Um, obviously, the General, not as much, but it's still a cool, it's cool that they have kind of an alternative uh, between them. I like that. So, again, I'll do a breakdown video maybe of each category because, again, the, the other incredible thing about these types of vehicles is the direction that you want to take it in as far as accessories goes because not only does Polaris make a very large amount of accessories that are really cool, but so does the aftermarket. The aftermarket makes some incredible things from the stuff we saw kind of in here today from your standard stuff, your windshield, your roof, um, some racks, some bumpers, some winches, but there's also stuff like snow plows, gun racks, audio systems, spare tire holders, lighting, a ton of lighting options, and so much more. All right, guys. Well, that is the 2021 Polaris lineup. Thank you guys for tuning in to Garage News. Again, I'm Anthony. I hope you guys like the new setup. This is, I believe, what, the third video that we've done with this uh, new setup, the D21. I've been pulling it out to do some of these videos. You'll probably see it back in here. We're running the mic. Hopefully, you're getting a little cleaner audio. Um, yeah, I'm liking it. And as always, please take some time here. If you're not subscribed, hit subscribe down below. Please share the content, which just means, you know, copy the link, send it to a buddy, put it on your Facebook uh, or anywhere for that matter. And uh, of course, what do you guys think of the 2021 Polaris off-road lineup? Drop me a comment down below. Let's start some talking. If you guys want to see some breakdowns on anything specific, also drop that comment down below. Again, guys, I'm Anthony. This is the Wrenched Out Garage. Garage news every Saturday. Thanks for tuning in. See you in the next video.